Welcome back to another Tech Talk. I'm Stan with Sierra Olympia. Today I want to talk about spectral bands and I want to start broad talking about the overall electromagnetic spectrum. And then we're going to narrow down little by little until we're down in the range of the infrared where we here at Sierra Olympia do our imaging work and even a little bit into the details of how our sensors work. spectrum spans all the way from what we know as radio waves uh, through microwaves through light which is where we will narrow down in our talk in a moment and then even up into higher energy photons such as x-rays gamma rays and so on I'm going to narrow in on the part of the spectrum that we call light that part of the spectrum is actually made up of a couple of different segments there's the part that we experience every day the, it's a fairly narrow part actually that we experience as what we see colors red orange yellow green blue on either side of that part of the spectrum on the uh, higher energy side of that is called ultraviolet uh, and on the lower energy side of the spectrum of, of visible light is the part that we work in here at Sierra Olympia called infrared one way of looking at light is as a wave, almost like uh, throwing a stone into water and seeing the ripples that travel out from, from that splash. When we look at those ripples in the water or in electromagnetic waves that are light, we measure them by looking from the peak of one to the peak of the, from one peak to the next peak, basically, on a wave. And the, the shorter that distance is, the shorter the wavelength is. And in the case of electromagnetism, in the case of light, the shorter the wavelength is, the higher the energy those light photons are. And I'm going back and forth between photons and waves here, and there's a great argument to be had as to whether light is a wave or a particle. That's another whole 10 minute video that we'll do some other time. Um, but that's the fundamentals of wavelength of light is measuring from one peak of the wave to the next. And in the case of ripples on water, you might measure those in centimeters, okay? In the case of wavelength of light, we're measuring in microns, micrometers, a million little, break a, take a meter, break it into a million parts, that's a micron. So let me show you an example of one of our long wave cameras. This is the Vayu HD, which sees images in the eight to 14 micron range, like we've been talking about. Now the infrared light from an image scene comes in, comes through the lens, and then gets focused onto the detector array that's here inside the camera. Now I happen to have this very detector array right here so we can see it in a little more detail. But behind the lens here, this detector array gets the image focused on the detectors, which are actually inside this front glass cover here. And then the electronics boards back here uh, are responsible for getting the image data out of the detector array, processing it. And from there, it can go out over ethernet, uh, to a computer or a display, uh, can come out of an HDMI type output directly to a display, many different ways to get the images out of that sensor. Now we'll swing over here to our mid-wave example, remembering the mid-wave is the three to five micron part of the infrared region. Uh, this is our Ventus Compact Mark II. A couple of differences here. In this case, you can see these motors on the lens. This lens is actually a zoom lens that can zoom in and out and has motorized focus as well. So this is an example of a lens that might be used for maybe some longer range work or some uh, surveillance where we might want to see a large region and then once we see something interesting we can zoom in and narrow down on a particular object. So that's why this lens is a little more complex than the lens I showed you before. We've taken a journey today through spectral bands. We've started with the full electromagnetic spectrum and then narrowed in on the part that we call light that we experience uh, with our eyes and with our instruments. And then when we narrowed down to the infrared spectrum, we talked about how we can measure the wavelengths of light like we do ripples on water. And we talked about the journey of how infrared photons go through the lens onto the detector, get turned into electrical signals that are then processed by the electronics, sent out to ultimately become a display for a person to look at or for a computer to process. Really, that's about what we do here at Sierra Olympia. I love talking about this stuff and I hope that's been informative and interesting for you too. I'm Stan from Sierra Olympia. This has been a Tech Talk. We'll see you next time.